Are you heading to New Zealand for your competency assessment program or your CAP course? If yes, then keep on watching. So for those who haven't met me yet, my name is Ati Aima and I'm a registered nurse in the Philippines, now in New Zealand and Australia. So dahil papunta kayo ngayon sa New Zealand para sa competency assessment program ninyo, ang mga pag-uusapan natin dito sa video na to is more on yung what to expect pagdating mo ng New Zealand para sa yung CAP placement or cohort, and ano yung mga kailangan mong uh, isa puso. What I mean is, you need to learn while you're doing your placement there, and ano pa yung mga domain. So, yes, pag-uusapan din natin dito yung mga domain na ipapasa natin, or ipapasa ninyo sa Nursing Council of New Zealand for them to verify na you are actually uh, safe to practice healthcare in New Zealand and also you are culturally competent for working in New Zealand. So yes, ang sasabihin ko sa video na to is more on based on my experience as I did my CAP last May 2024 and now I already have my qualifications as a registered nurse in New Zealand and registered nurse in Australia. So these are based on my experience and I just wanted to share to you or to every one of you about so, para sa CAP course or Competency Assessment Program, it will always depend on which school will you enroll. So, kasi ngayon, sa dahil dami na ng ano, madaming mga internationally qualified nurses that are trying their best and they're locked to enroll to each school, na, lalo na ngayon na sa old pathway, uh, depende talaga yan kung saan ka mapupunta. So, sa, eh, sa school na inenrollan ko, meron silang program na yung part 1 is online theory. So, whilst I was working here in Australia, Full time, I was able to finish my part one of the course. So, ang kagandahan nun is they will actually introduce you sa mga healthcare system of New Zealand, then Disability Act, healthcare in New Zealand, so culturally competency as well. So, sa yung medication management, manual handling, and so each part of the module, as I can say, module. So, this is the sample of the domain that we were actually answering whilst we were having our placement for four weeks. So, I forgot to mention, um, sa yung school na napasukan ko for uh, my CAP, they offer the cohort and the placement. So, ano yung difference? Ang napansin ko na difference based sa lahat ng nakalap ko na ideas is ang cohort is they have the opportunity for you to do it, the, play, the whole competency assessment program for only two weeks. The catch is you're gonna do the OSCE. So, ako naman, I wasn't offered with the cohort. So, I went to the traditional, I'll, I'll just call it traditional, but Anyway, so I was just went to the traditional competency assessment program, which is the uh, four-week placement. So actually, I find it very interesting na yung four-week placement kasi I just had ample time to finish everything, all the paperwork that I need to submit to the Nursing Council of New Zealand, all the domain from one to four. Kasi ang dami talagang paperwork. I can tell you right now, ang daming paperwork na kailangan yung gawin para sa placement na yun. As in... Grabe. Kaya saludo ako sa mga nurses na nagawa yung cohort na two weeks lang. Hindi ko alam kung ano klaseng tumbling ang ginawa nyo, pero grabe, ang gagaling nyo. <laughs> so for the clinical placement, well, for the clinical placement naman, what I expected to, I mean, what is the expectations when you have one? So in my case, so I did it for four weeks. So it actually depends on, ang galing ko muna it actually depends on which school you are enrolled to and it actually depends on how long normally the placement will take place. So in the school that I went to, I did the proper placement which doesn't do the OSCE. So yung ibig kong sabihin ng proper placement is, I mean, wala naman proper and improper, pero what I mean is, uh, four-week placement yung ginawa ko. So, um, rules ng school kung saan ako naka-enroll is, if you do the four-week placement, they're gonna assess your knowledge and your basic nursing skills if they're, you're still gonna have the OSCE. In my case, I wasn't required to have the OSCE anymore kasi maganda naman yung 
ang feedback ng preceptor ko. So, and anyway, so it actually depends on which school are you going to, right? So, it means some places, some schools will also offer the placement for uh, another two weeks. So, some of them are four weeks, five weeks, or six weeks. Plus, the theory na ginagawa sa uni mismo, sa school mismo. Yun. What are the competencies that we need to submit for the New Zealand Council and why do we need to submit it to them? So actually, this is to provide a framework for developing competencies and describe the responsibilities for the healthcare profession. So these standards are also guide for nurses on the knowledge, skills, judgment and attitude needed to practice safely in New Zealand. So this is the sample of the domain one, which is the professional responsibility that I submitted for the New Zealand Council. And this is to just to ensure that I am going to be a safe nurse that is up to their standards and maintaining the highest level of integrity and ethical behavior in my practice. That means that I understand the role of being a nurse through the professional responsibility. Also, if you have noticed, all of the competency domains that I just submitted is on the first person point of view, meaning all of my paragraph that I submitted in the New Zealand Council needs to be in my own perspective as I am writing my own paragraph. So what the, what do I mean? Tagalogin natin. Kaya ito naka first person point of view kasi nagiging health accountable ako sa lahat ng mga sinulat ko at alam nila na ako mismo ang gumagawa ng mga domain na yon. If you're still getting confused, you can have a guidance from your tutor. So kaya we actually enroll to a college or a school for this CAP because we have the tutors who will guide us throughout the way para i-revise yung mga domain na ipapasa natin sa council. Domain 2 is the management of nursing care. So most here, ito yung pagpa-plan ng nursing care and to achieve the identified outcomes, then having the nursing assessment of clients in variety of settings. Ito rin yung magkakaroon kayo na accurate documentation and maintaining the confidentiality of information. Tapos ito rin yung time na you will actually explain the effects, consequences, alternative and proposed treatment options for some client uh, in your practice. So, ito, medyo mahaba-haba to kasi nga, it all, all involves about nursing care. So, I'll show you some examples. Andito nga. And please don't forget, it's always on your perspective. So, what I mean is, dapat naka first person point of view pa rin tayo. All the examples that I have written down here in my domain 2 were my experience based on my four-week clinical placement. Useful tip, Make a daily journal of everything that happens to you inside your clinical placement. Kasi pagka may journal ka, ang mga pwede mong ilagay sa domain mo, yung mga experiences mo, you can use it para isubmit sa nursing council. For the domain 3, it is the interpersonal relationships. Bakit kailangan ito? Kasi it increases the mutual trust so the patients are very open about their complaints and nurses can analyze well for the patient's needs kasi... Uh, if we actually establish this rapport to all the patients, residents, and clients that we have, we can determine what the patient needs. Domain four is for the interprofessional healthcare and quality improvement. This is for a better flow of information and communication, which can lead to better coordination of care and few errors. So this is actually a multidisciplinary approach where there's a range of professionals to ensure a holistic, social, medical, and psychological needs of a resident or a patient that are taken into account. So ang maganda dito is kasama dito ang doctors, your co-nurses, physiotherapy. So everyone will work collaboratively for the well-being of the client. So that's the summary of my competency assessment program experience in New Zealand. I hope you have learned something from this video. And if you like what you watch, please don't hesitate to share it to all your fellow nurses as well. Mga kunars, pa-share naman sa kanila din ang mga natutunan niyo sa video na to. Lalo na sa mga mag-undertake ng competency assessment program and yung mga pupunta sa New Zealand. If you like what you watch, please subscribe to my channel or put a thumbs up to this video. Kung nakatulong sa inyo to, para ma-ease din yung anxiety nyo. Alam ko, masyadong mataas ang pressure, lalo na you're going to a different country, lalo na sa mga manggagaling sa Pilipinas or anywhere around the world na magkakap nga. So, yeah. So, sa next video ko, I'll gonna discuss how I got my AFRA registration to be qualified here in Australia. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.